Hello everyone, in this session we'll discuss about machine language. Now to discuss machine language we need to have the term that is program. What is program? A program is a list of instructions or statements given to the computer to get our desired result. That means say for example if I want to implement a program for getting the result that whether the given number is prime or not. So our task is to design a program such that it gives our desired result that is whether the entered number is prime number or not. So that is our program. So a program can be defined as a list of instructions or statements for directing the computer to perform required data processing task. That means the data in the example of prime number program is the number which we give as an input. It is to be processed and it is to be checked whether it is prime or not. So a program is a set of instruction. Now there are various types of programs available. So let us categorize them. Starting with the first type that is binary code, a pure binary code. That means it is in terms of ones and zeros. So a program written in form of one zero, that is the command to the computer are given in the form of ones and zeros. Now we are knowing that binary form one and zero is nothing but electronic voltages given to the computer. So over here the pure binary signals or pure binary code is written to get the desired task. So the sequence of instructions written are in form of binary along with the instructions and operands are also provided in binary. Suppose we want to perform addition of two numbers then in that case the operands instruction is given as a binary code but along with that operands are also given in form of binary code. So the sequence of instructions are written in form of binary. So let's see an example to that. This is how the program is written in form of binary. Now as you can see into this table, the location number is in binary that is 0th location of memory stores this particular instruction code that is 0010, 0000, 0000, 0100. Then location number 1 stores another instruction. Then location number 10, that is 2, it stores another instruction. So this is how the program is written. Now the computer will purely understand this binary language. But it is very much obvious that by watching this code, we are not getting what this program is meant for. But these codes, these codes are defined for some instructions. So for the human interpretability, what we are going to do is we are, we are not purely understanding binary language. So we are moving on to some other types of languages which are understood by the human beings. So the another type of program or category of program is octal or hexadecimal. So a one step ahead from binary we are moving to octal or hexadecimal. Now what is the benefit of writing that? Now over here instead of writing the binary codes we would be writing the corresponding octal or hexadecimal representation. That means over here location 000 stores the instruction 2004. Now you would be surprised what does this 2004 means? It is some specific code for specific instruction. So at 001 some another instruction is there, 002 it's some another instruction is there. So this is another representation of a program. So another category of program which can be written in octal or hexadecimal code. But for sure this code is not going to be understood by the computer. So it needs to be translated to binary form. So there should be some interface which translates this octal code to binary code. And computer will execute that binary code. We are all knowing that computer understands only one language that is binary. But we cannot work out with binary codes. Neither we can work out with octal or hexadecimal code. Because it is also not that much understandable by the human being that is 2004 what does it represents 1005 we don't know so we should have something some table or some list which specifies that if this add instruction is there then the code is 1005 
we'll come to that later part so this is another form of representation the third form of representation for us is symbolic code wherein we would be introducing some symbols alphabetical numeral symbols so alpha numeric code in that case symbols now we don't have numbers only we have symbols as well as numbers to represent the instruction so the instruction would be having operation part address part and some another part of the instruction code that is if instruction is direct or indirect addressing mode it is using then we can have the direct or indirect form so that is another part of the instruction so each symbolic instruction can be translated into binary coded form because instructions are to be assigned some code which computer can understand and that is only binary code so each symbolic instruction can be translated to binary code a specific binary code because each instruction would be assigned a unique code and the formation of this symbolic code is nothing but assembly language program so let's see an example of it so this is an example of assembly language program where you can see we have introduced the symbolic form LDA, ADD, STA, HLT, like that. So at location 000, we are having the instruction LDA with operand 004. Now we are we have studied LDA instruction means load the accumulator with the operand stored at address 004. Then add 005. Again, we are knowing this instruction. Add the content of accumulator with the operand located at address 005. So this is what is the assembly language program. Now this is very much understandable by the human beings because we have introduced the symbols. So LDA, load accumulator, add, add, addition, STA, store the content of accumulator, halt the computer. So likewise. So now the question arise what we can do. So we need to have some program which converts this assembly language code which is we are writing in paper needs to be translated. That means actually after writing it into the paper we are providing it to some editor to computer and that computer will translate the corresponding assembly code to the binary code and the interface required for performing this translation is termed as assembler which will come across through the term later on so the assembly language program is another category in the last category what we are having is high level programming languages which we have already heard of it like C++, Fortran, Java, many languages are there. So these are special languages developed to reflect the procedures used in the solution of program rather than concerned with the computer hardware behavior. Means what does this statement means? We are writing the program which is exactly understandable by us. That means whatever we write the pseudo code or we write the algorithm can be easily reflected into this programming language without the concern of the computer behavior. That means without the concern whether computer will understand it or not. So again question arise for us that if we are writing it in this form then it needs to be translated to binary form. Yes, and this process would be performed by the compiler programs. So the, what is the job of compiler? Compiler will translate high level language to the binary language. And the language which is given as an input to the compiler, they are high level languages. And what we get as an output is always a low level language. And low level language is nothing but a binary language. So let us see an example of this. Now this is the code which you are seeing is an example of Fortran language. So in this we have declared three integer variables a, b, c. The data a is stored with 83, b variable is stored with minus 23. Then we are performing c is equals to a plus b and we are ending the program. So our sample program is written in high level language. So this is all about categories of the program.